The Community Reinvestment Act, commonly referred to as the CRA, was enacted in 1977 and requires the federal banking regulators to assess each depository institution's record of helping meet the credit needs of the local communities it is chartered to serve, particularly the low and moderate income neighborhoods in those communities, consistent with safe and sound banking practices. The regulations implementing CRA are designed to evaluate a bank's retail loans, investments, and services to determine if they have been offered in neighborhoods with different income levels throughout its assessment area. An assessment area is where a bank reasonably believes it can serve its marketplace based on the location of its main office, branches, and deposit-taking ATMs. For larger banks, the CRA also evaluates a bank's community development lending, investments, and services. You may be wondering why. Community development activities fill the gaps between the credit banks make available to individual home and business owners and credit that can benefit a larger, low, and moderate income community. Examples include loans or investments that revitalize commercial areas or provide funds to lower the cost of homebuyer programs. Community development activities build a stronger sense of place because they require systematic and sustained collaborations between federal, state, and local partners. These efforts are often complex, time-consuming, and require innovative funding and development strategies to move from an idea to implementation. The CRA regulations define community development very specifically to include projects related to affordable housing for low or moderate income individuals, community services targeted to low or moderate income individuals, activities that promote economic development, and finally, activities that revitalize or stabilize low or moderate income communities, designated disaster areas, and distressed or underserved non-metropolitan middle income geographies. Now, let's take a moment to look at each piece of the definition to consider what types of activities may qualify for CRA consideration. For affordable housing, loans to build or reconstruct scattered site single family homes for purchase or multifamily rental structures where a percentage of units are reserved for qualified borrowers earning less than 80% of area median family income. Community services such as financial or home ownership counseling efforts funding child daycare operations in underserved markets, or not-for-profit health care services for income-eligible residents, dollars supporting battered women's centers, alcohol and drug recovery centers, and homeless shelters are also eligible to receive CRA consideration to the extent they are targeted to low and moderate income individuals. Community development can also mean financing businesses or farms that meet certain eligibility requirements under different federal programming or simply have gross annual revenues of one million or less. Special attention is given to what regulators, bankers, community groups, action coalitions, and governments refer to as the purpose test which considers whether any such loan, investment, or service supports permanent job creation, retention, and or general financial betterment improvement for persons with low or moderate incomes. Bank efforts to serve populations living on tribal lands may also be considered as community development. For a loan, investment, or service to qualify for CRA consideration as an activity that revitalizes or stabilizes a distressed or underserved non-metropolitan middle income area, the activity must be located in an area that is designated by the bank regulatory agencies. Each year, the Federal Reserve, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, and the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency designate such areas by carefully considering local poverty and unemployment rates, population loss, and the size, density, and dispersion of the residents living there. Because community development activities are so complex, they are often spearheaded by organizations that operate over large statewide or regional areas. For this reason, a bank's community development loans, investments, and services are reviewed for consideration if they are in the bank's assessment area or the broader statewide or regional area that includes the assessment area. 
In fact, if a bank has been responsive to the needs of its assessment area, they may also receive consideration for community development activities that may not have any direct impact in its assessment areas. An examiner determines if the level of responsiveness is appropriate as it relates to the performance context factors that are unique to each evaluation, such as the bank's size, capacity, business strategy, and the needs of its assessment areas. What are some other examples of activities that banks can participate in that qualify for CRA consideration? Loans to financial intermediaries such as Community Development Financial Institutions, or CDFIs, Native CDFIs, New Market Tax Credit Eligible Community Development Entities, or CDEs, Community Development Corporations, or CDCs, and minority and women-owned financial institutions or other community loan fund pools. These entities are dedicated to providing affordable credit to populations that need it the most. Investments, grants, or donations to financial intermediaries, like those that assist entrepreneurs build business plans or help homeowners in distress keep their homes, also meet the definition of community development. Community development services in both urban and rural markets can and should be considered, including partnerships with small business investment companies, or SBICs, and rural business investment companies, or RBICs, as well as other state and municipal obligations that support affordable housing or other community development efforts. Included here could be job training programs that enable low or moderate income individuals to work. These examples and many more can be found in the interagency questions and answers on community reinvestment found at ffiec.gov and its website is a great source for a variety of CRA interagency resources, including each agency's regulations and CRA ratings information. Let's look at an example of how this works. Lee is a community development officer at Friendly Partners Bank in Michigan. Friendly Partners Bank is a large regional institution with over $2.5 billion in assets regulated by the Federal Reserve. Ruth is the executive director of a local not-for-profit that offers vocational training and job placement services for low-income or unemployed adults in the inner city. Ruth contacts Lee to ask Friendly Partners Bank for a $100,000 five-year investment in a new collaborative that will place recent ex-offenders into a new registered nursing program administered by a local community college. Ruth informs Lee that the bank's investment will be supported by a municipal bond designed to reduce criminal recidivism in the community. The bank is also asked to cover any short-term cash needs, should any arise, to ensure the program remains viable. Because Ruth's organization primarily serves a low-income population, Lee immediately recognizes the benefit to the community. And because the activity is a community investment that helps move people into higher paying jobs, he's confident it will qualify for CRA consideration. He funds the request. Lauren, a bank examiner with the Federal Reserve, evaluates Friendly Partners Bank's performance in helping to meet the needs of its assessment area. She reviews the funding as part of the investment test. Lauren confirms that Ruth's organization helps low-income individuals not only build the skills necessary to land much-needed entry-level nursing positions, but she also helps them draft a resume and improve soft skills too. At the end of the examination, Lauren notifies Lee that Friendly Partners Bank will receive CRA credit for this investment. Federal Reserve Banks across the country have community development staff working with banks and community organizations to help forge partnerships designed to address the particular needs of underserved communities. We do this by conducting and sharing research on community needs, identifying emerging issues, and educating community stakeholders about programs at the federal, state, and local levels that can be leveraged to address the community's particular needs. We hope you have found this video informative and helpful as you consider the ways in which your organization can promote community development activities in your local area. To learn more about what we do, visit fedcommunities.org. If you have any questions or comments, please reach out to us. We're always listening. <music>